In this video, we'll explore the two most common op-amp configurations, the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers. We'll break down how each one works, compare their behavior, and show you how to choose the right one for your circuit. Let's start with the inverting configuration. In this configuration, the input signal is connected through a resistor RI to the inverting input of the op-amp, while the non-inverting input of the op-amp is grounded. A feedback resistor RF connects the output back to the inverting input, ensuring negative feedback. The key result? The output is inverted. It's 180 degrees out of phase with the input. Now let's look at the non-inverting amplifier. In this setup, the input signal goes directly to the non-inverting input. The negative feedback is applied to the inverting input through a resistor divider formed by RF and RG. The output follows the input's phase. There's no inversion. Let's relook inverting configuration in details. Please note that the non-inverting terminal is tied to ground, which is zero volt potential. According to the virtual short rule, the inverting terminal must be zero volt. If we apply a voltage potential VI at the input, the current VI by RI will flow through RI. Since zero current flows into the inverting terminal of the op amp, the current flowing through RI will flow entirely through RF. Now using KVL, we can write the voltage equation for output voltage VO as shown. That negative sign, it means the output is inverted. Now let's see the non-inverting configuration. Let's assume the input voltage applied is VI at the non-inverting terminal of the op amp. Using the virtual short rule of op amp, we can say that the voltage developed at the inverting terminal would be VI. The current flowing through RG would be VI by RG. Since no current flows into or out of the input terminals of the op amp, the current flowing through RG has to come through RF. Using KVL, we can write the expression of the output voltage VO. Here, gain is always greater than or equal to unity, and the output is in phase with input. If we set the feedback resistor RF to zero in a non-inverting amplifier configuration, the circuit effectively becomes a buffer amplifier, also known as a unity gain amplifier. One big difference lies in input impedance. The inverting amplifier has a relatively low input impedance, determined by RI, which takes current from the source, creating additional voltage drop at the source. Therefore, inverting amplifier may not be optimal choice for sensor readouts, especially sensors with high output resistance. In contrast, the input resistance or impedance of non-inverting configuration is very high. Ideally, it should be infinite input impedance. In real world, it is limited by the transistors used inside the op amp. The value of input impedance in modern op amps range from several mega ohms to several giga ohms. Connecting the same sensor to VI in a non-inverting configuration draws nearly zero current so the sensor's output voltage remains unaffected. To understand the impact of lower input impedance of inverting amplifier, let's walk through a simple example. We'll use an NTC thermistor as our sensor. NTC stands for negative temperature coefficient, which means as the temperature increases, the resistance of the sensor decreases. At 25 degrees Celsius, this thermistor typically offers a resistance of 10 kilo ohms. Now here's the important part, we can't directly measure resistance. So instead, we use a voltage divider method combining the thermistor with a known resistor. By measuring the voltage across the known resistance, we can indirectly determine the thermistor's resistance, and therefore the temperature. Here, the NTC thermistor, shown at the top having name RNTC, is added in series with a known reference resistor RREF of 10 kilo ohm. The value of RREF does not change with temperature while RNTC reduces with increase in temperature. At 25 degrees Celsius, the expected value of RNTC is 10 kilo ohm. The reference voltage used is one volt. Using the voltage division rule, the voltage appearing at the output of this sensor should be 0.5 volt. Let's try to amplify this signal with a gain factor of two. Expected output after amplification is one volt. Here, a non-inverting amplifier is used to amplify the sensor's signal. The sensor output is connected to the input terminal of the op-amp. Since the input impedance of the op-amp is infinite, the current drawn by the op-amp's input terminal is zero. 
so there is no additional voltage drop. The voltage appearing at the input terminal is 0.5 volt. Therefore, the output voltage is 1 volt, which is exactly what we expected. In this setup, an inverting amplifier amplifies the sensor signal. The sensor connects to the input resistor, RI equals 10 kilo ohm, giving a low input impedance. The sensor output drops to 0.33 volt instead of 0.5 volt, making the amplifier output minus 0.66 volt instead of minus 1 volt. The error is due to input impedance loading on the sensor output. To conclude, the inverting configuration is not suitable for sensor readouts. Non-inverting configuration is more suitable. Let's compare the harmonic distortion in both configurations. It happens when transistor non-linearity adds unwanted harmonic frequencies. Ideally, harmonic distortion should be zero, and the lower it is, the better. A good rule of thumb? Keep the voltage swing across transistors small to minimize distortion. There's an important difference between the two topologies. Even though both produce the same output magnitude, their input behavior is quite different. In the inverting amplifier, the input terminals stay nearly fixed thanks to the virtual short to ground. This ensures lesser swing across the input transistors, reducing the distortion. But in the non-inverting amplifier, the input terminal moves with the signal due to a virtual short to the input voltage. This will produce more distorted output. To conclude, inverting configuration has less distortion. Here, the key differences are summarized. It is much easier to add or subtract an inverting configuration. It offers low distortion. Major drawback is the low input impedance. Non-inverting configurations are suitable for sensor readout applications where high input impedance is desirable. Signal addition and subtraction is difficult. Distortion is higher than inverting configuration. While both configurations use the same op amp, their behavior, applications, and performance can be quite different. Understanding these differences helps you choose the right topology for your circuit. Want to dive deeper into op-amp design? Explore more on our channel and visit analogcircuitdesign.com. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more hands-on electronics tutorials.